Hello everyone, welcome to Online Bible Club for this week. My name's Liz and I'm going to be telling you your story today. Do you remember, all our stories come from God's Word, the Bible, and they're really important for us to know what God is saying to us. So today, we're going to look at one of the parables that Jesus told us. Now that's a story, but we call them a parable because they're a story about ordinary everyday things, but they have a special meaning. So when Jesus was here on earth, he told us parables about sheep, about people and different things that they did. And he told us lots of parables about fields. So have a quick look round. So why do you think we've come up here today? Yes, you can see lots and lots of fields and things growing in the fields. And Jesus spoke to us about them. So I've got some seeds here, so let's have a quick look at our seeds. So if I put those seeds in the ground, do you think I'd get apples? Or these ones? Do you think I'd get bananas? Or these ones? Do you think I'd get potatoes? No, when I plant carrot seeds, I get carrots. And if I plant sweet peas, which are flowers, which smell beautiful, that's what I can expect to get. So the story that Jesus said was about a farmer who had a field. So this farmer, he said to his people, we need to make this field ready because we're going to plant some seeds in it. So today we get out a big tractor, we'd get out a, a plough, but they didn't have that in those days. So perhaps they had to work at it themselves, or perhaps they had some oxen or some animals to help them with a plough. But first of all, they had to make sure the soil was really good. And then the farmer said, good, the field looks brilliant. Now we're going to plant the seeds. So again, they didn't get out another tractor and a drill to plant the seeds. I'll show you how they did it. They used a bit of sacking or something like that and they tied it around their middle and they tied it tight and then they held it in the corners and the farmer put all the good seed in there. And then the men walked up and down the field and they threw out all the, the seed, all right? And that's what they did, up and then all the way back, up and down the field. Now I can't walk on this field because you can see it's been sown. So let's have a look and see what was sown. This seed here, if you come and have a closer look, is called wheat and this is what the farmer was sowing in our story so this here is called the ear which is where all the good grain is now grown so what does the seed need to make it grow it needs soil which we had got lots of lovely soil it also needs sunshine and in jesus's country where jesus lived there was always lots of good sunshine and it needed rain. Now in our country, we get lots of rain, but in Jesus's time, perhaps in his country, they had to water the plants. But you can see here how well our plants have grown. Each one of these wheat has grown from one seed. But look how many seeds are now on the ear at the top. Now in our story, a good seed was sown, but let's have a look at this picture. Now, it's not daytime. You can tell there's a moon and it's very dark. We don't actually know who this person is, but the somebody went into the farmer's field late at night, also sowing some seeds. But this wasn't the farmer. This wasn't his men. This was an enemy. Oh, that's really bad. And he wasn't sowing wheat seed, he was sowing weeds. Now in the morning, nobody knew that this enemy had come along and the men were getting excited. They were waiting every day to see what would grow in the field. And look, one day they were really excited. Things had started to grow. Now when seeds start to germinate or start to grow, First of all, the roots go down really low. So they're looking for water and nutrients from the soil. So if you want to wiggle your toes, 
that's just like the roots going down really low and then a shoot will start to come up it will come up and look for the light and you can see the stalk starts to grow and then the leaves start to come and then amazingly the ears which is the bit that the farmer wants okay but these men have found a problem there are two types of plants in this field can you see the wheat that's these ones they look really good and healthy but over here can you see these ones they're the weeds <gasps> somebody they said has come and sown weeds in our field that's awful we need to pull all those weeds up now let's have a look at this farmer's field can you see this is good wheat? There's lots of it here. It's not ripe yet. We need to wait a bit longer. But can you see over there? There's some weeds. Now, they went to the farmer and they said, Farmer, we've got a problem with our field. There's some really good wheat growing, but there's some weeds growing as well. What should we do? Should we go out there and pull up all the bad weeds? And the farmer said, No. If you go out there and pull up those bad weeds, you're going to disturb my good plants and I want them to grow. Leave everything and let it grow. But when it comes to harvest time, first we're going to get all the weeds out and look what we're going to do with them. We're going to burn them. So they were put into, into groups, the bad weeds, and then they were burnt. And then the farmer said, even if you disturb the roots of the good seed, then the good plants, it doesn't matter because we'll go straight out again and we'll take the good wheat into the barn. Now, wheat is a really important plant. From our wheat, we take all these seeds off, we grind them up and we make flour. What do you like to make out of flour? I expect all of you like bread and cakes and biscuits. So wheat is really important. And that's a really lovely story. But what does it mean? What was Jesus wanting us to learn about him? We're gonna go singing first of all. So we're gonna sing, what a mighty, mighty saviour you are. Can you remember that song? And I'll see you after singing, bye-bye. No one is good, no one is holy before God, I need someone to cleanse me, no one is pure, no one is righteous in your sight, I need someone to save me.
story, he wanted us to learn a very important message. Now, let's have a think again. We've got two types of plant. We've got good seed and bad seed, good plants and bad plants. And Jesus said, in our world, which is like the field, there are two types of people. There are people who are good and people who are not good. Now, does that mean that if we do everything, we try to do everything right, that that's good enough? No, the Bible is really clear. The Bible says all of us are bad. All of us inside have sin. Even though we look lovely on the outside, do you remember we've told you that man looks on the outside, but God looks on the heart. God looks inside us. So all of us were born like this bad seed and we deserve because of our sin to be punished. But do you remember what Jesus came to do? Jesus came to die to take away our sin. That's why we sang the song, you're a mighty, mighty savior. We all need a savior. Now the Bible's very clear that if people don't love Jesus, they will go to a place called hell, which is where Jesus isn't. And we need to think about it carefully, but we don't need to be really worried because if we trust Jesus and say we're sorry for our sins, Jesus has said we can be forgiven. And then we, like this wheat, will go into the barn, we will be gathered into heaven and we will shine like the stars. That's amazing, isn't it? So Jesus is the like the farmer and the enemy who came along is Satan. But we don't need to be too scared. Remember, by trusting in Jesus, he will forgive us because that's his promise. And we know we can go to heaven to be with him. So let's pray together. Put our hands together and close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lovely story that you've told us. Thank you that you've reminded us that although we are all bad and we have sin in our hearts if we say we're sorry for the things we say and do and think that are wrong you will truly forgive us and we can become your children and you will take us home to heaven with you father we thank you for this lovely story and we pray that each one of us will truly know you and love you for ourselves please help us to have a lovely week with our family and friends amen now, there's one more really exciting thing I must tell you about. So, it's nearly the summer holidays. Who's excited about the summer holidays? I am really excited that the summer holidays are coming soon from school. But it also means, not only do we get a break from school, we've got Holiday Bible Club coming. Now, last year, we couldn't meet at church and we did it online. So you watched our videos and we bought you some packs for work. We're gonna do exactly the same thing again this year. And you will have an invitation. In fact, you will have two invitations in your packs. One is for you and for your grown up, so you know exactly what's gonna happen. And the other one is for you to give to your friend, because we'd like you to tell all your friends about how wonderful and exciting Holiday Bible Club is. We've got some really exciting things planned for you this year, and we would love you to tell your friends about it and to join us. So the invitations will be in your pack. You give one away and give one to your grown up. We hope you'll have a really good week. See you again next week. Bye bye.